What's up, everybody? It is December 5th, Tuesday. We've got a three-game slate, which does not uh, look very good. But that doesn't mean we're not going to play tonight. My wife's out of town. You still got to play DFS. There's no way around it. So let's take a look at these three games. Now, in a three-game set, sort of everybody is in my shortlist. It's hard to just flat-out dis... Jesus Christ. Flat-out disregard... Um, anyone because sometimes you don't have a choice you have to make something work and tonight is one of those nights i think so i'm gonna dig in game by game list everybody out that i like compare that to you know what sort of spits out in bulk in the optimizer and hope that sort of runs together so first game up raptors and sons uh, Raptors are 13 and a half point favorites at home. Suns on a back to back after uh, Devin Booker just shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting last night. So, you know, we obviously have to take a look at Lowry, DeRozan, and then I think that we'll also need to take a look at Abaka, Siakam, and Valanciunas. Uh, Jakob Pertl was sent home from practice with a bit of an illness at least I think that's what happened I don't necessarily know if that's entirely new news so let me double check that first before I'm just spouting out nonsense what's the date on this yes okay so he's up in the air which means if he's out it's going to be uh, a Jonas Valanciunas night so right off the bat um the Suns do sort of limit threes, which isn't the best news for Lowry. So I think it's a DeMar DeRozan night. Just to double check, I'd like to take a look here. Yeah, his per minute stats this year are fine. That all sort of runs together. Um, naturally, I have to put down Jonas. Even if... Um, Jakob Pertl is, that's not how you spell it, Valanciunas, got it. Uh, even if Jakob Pertl is healthy, or healthy enough to play, um, I think Jonas could be in for an interesting game. I don't see any issue with having a Baca, although it does concern me a little bit that um, he does like to bomb threes. I might prefer Siakam. So I'm assuming that uh, Tyson Chandler is going to be the one to sit tonight, and we'll be getting Greg Monroe and Alex Len. So defensively, they should be a little bit worse on the interior. I would assume that everyone agrees Tyson Chandler is the best defender of the three. Um, so yeah, DeRozan for sure. Valanciunas I think is is in a really, really good spot, especially if Pirtle's out. And I think that I'll even take a look at Surge. How do Surge's per minute stats look? They look good as well. So I'm okay with all of that. Let's move to, uh, let's move to the Suns. To hope uh, Booker keeps shooting, because I assume he's going to look okay. We shall see. Yes, he does. I think that uh, we want to take a look at Booker. I don't much mind the the back to back. It's not a huge deal. Um. Like TJ Warren as well. It's going to be an interesting game because of the blowout potential. Ty 
Tyler Eulis still at 4,000. I'd be inclined to say that he looks fine. And I'm definitely interested in Greg Monroe. Not a lot of centers out there. He's at 4,500. And he's a guy that is at 4,500 and could conceivably put up 40 fantasy points. Like, that wouldn't be shocking if he ended up getting 30 minutes. Offensively skilled. One sec. Multitasking. Okay. Let's take a look at those guys. Let me just make sure their per minute stuff looks good. Devin Booker looks great. TJ Warren looks great. Tyler Eulis looks great. Greg Monroe looks great. I like all of it so far. This should be the most heavily owned game. <clears throat> So it does concern me a little bit there to have a ton of guys in a game that might be a blowout. So Booker needs 36 or 35 and a half, whatever. He's done in three of his last four, four of his last six. So I like that. TJ Warren needs 34 which he did the past two nights, three out of his last four, four of his last seven, so I like that. Eulis needs 20. He did it last night. He's done it in three out of his last four as well. And then Greg Monroe at 4,500 needs 22 and a half. Um, if he gets 20 minutes, I think that that's pretty safe. He had 32 minutes like two weeks ago, put up 40. You know, 25 minutes, put up 33 Lots of upside for Greg Monroe in a situation where it's not as if Jonas Valanciunas is any sort of great shakes on defense. So lots of Toronto and Phoenix tonight. Now uh, moving to OKC. Uh, this line is not out yet, so I made it up. Let me make sure that that is still the case. That is still the case. I guess we're probably waiting on some Gobert news. See if he's going to play again. So I have the Thunder as six point favorites at home. Um, not the highest total. This would probably be the least sexy game, depending on news, especially if like Rodney Hood plays and Gobert plays. Won't be that interesting. Um, so let's go grab Oklahoma City's info. It's good to see Gobert back. Um, just such a unique player, so good defensively. You don't ever want to see him on the shelf. All right, Thunder. Um, I mean, we're basically looking at five guys, and the idea of drafting Roberson doesn't exactly get me super excited. So let's see, Paul George needs 43 to hit 5x. Um, he does do a good bit of work in the mid-range. Shoots a lot of non-corner threes. Against Utah, he'd probably be getting like angles, right? Yeah. Yeah, I like Paul George. We've got Russ. And Russ is the biggest stud on the board, right? Like by leaps and bounds. Yeah, so Russ's salary is... 1600 higher than anybody else on the slate. He's going to be owned out the ass. I'll be honest, I don't necessarily think it's the best matchup. It could it'd be interesting if Gobert plays. What's Russ's history against Utah? So he laid an egg earlier this year in 36 minutes. 11 shots, a lot of turnovers. He had a bunch of big games against them 
last year. I mean, I don't think it's the best game for Russ, but he's so far and away a better option than anybody else that you almost have to have him in cash on this three-game slate, which kind of sucks. And Mello, I think, looks not bad. I hate him. Let me look at their per-minute stuff. So Mello needs 34. I don't love it. But, you know, if he fits, he fits. I would never run out um, George, Westbrook, and Mello. I think it'll probably just be Mello. Or just Russ, rather. But we shall see. This is a crap video, guys. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. It's hard to, it's hard to build out a three-game slate lineup and not tell you guys to, like... I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. Who doesn't like Paul George? Like, I'm not, I'm not reinventing the wheel here. It is interesting for, like, the, finding the value plays. Because everybody knows to, play, to pay up for certain guys. So right now I'm assuming that Rudy Gobert is playing similar minutes to last night. And I'm assuming that Rodney Hood is back. If that changes, I will update the projections accordingly. Joe Ingles looks to be a decent option. Yep, 5,000, needs 25 for value. I think I can get behind that. Has he hit it lately? Yeah, he's been there. Twice in his last seven, almost three times. I like some Joe Ingles. And... I think Jerebko could be an interesting punt. 3,900, so he needs essentially 20. He's done that three of his last seven. Still played 30 minutes last night. Has the ability to stretch the floor. It's just the usage rate that's kind of low. I get it. Uh, Jerebko could be a nice GPP play. Donovan Mitchell, 7,200. Did his salary drop? Yeah, 300. Okay. Mitchell needs 36. Done it twice in his last seven. A couple other 30-point games. He has cooled off a little bit. Ah, uh, no, nah, that's probably not where I'm looking. I don't really have any interest in favors. And Hood I don't trust. So that's probably just Joe Ingles out of Utah, which is fine. They have the, the worst implied total, so that all makes sense. I'll move to Portland. Oh, it totally moved to Portland. Portland, 104.75 implied total. It's third on the night. Uh, taken on the Wizards, who have just been dreadful. Wizards on the back-to-back -back after getting... You know, downright raped by the Jazz. 47 point beating. So, it could be an interesting game for them. It's like going to be interesting to see how they respond to the uh, utter shellacking that they took in Utah. I'm pretty sure that the stuff they did that the Jazz did to them last night is illegal in the state of Utah, but I could be wrong. The good news is, um, if the Jazz are now Washington's daddy, um, I think you could have a couple of those in Utah. 
So it's either Dame or CJ or Nurkic. I'm not. I don't want any part of figuring out the minutes for Aminu or Turner or Kanaten. So Dame needs 46. CJ needs 34. Nurkic needs 37. I'm not too concerned about any of that info on the screen. Dame's per minute stuff looks good. CJ's looks good. Nurkic looks not as good. So Dame needing 46. He's done it once in his last seven. Nope, twice. Twice in his last seven. A couple other 40-point games. Not going to kill you. Uh, CJ needs... I just said this shit. Now I forget. 33 and a half, 34, whatever. Which he's only done once. It's been a little quiet lately. So the backcourt for Portland of Dame and CJ is going to see a diet of Sadoransky, who sucks on defense. Tim Frazier, who just isn't good enough. And then Beal. And Beal's going to have to guard McCollum, I would imagine. So I def I'm going to be on Dame tonight, I think. But I'm okay with CJ. Just because um, I don't really see it in Nurkic, but let me double check. 35, 36, 30, 37, which he's done three times in his last seven, including three out of the last five. Um, it's not really my cup of tea. Like, I'd rather pay down from Monroe or something. I don't see the extra $3,000 worth of value there. So let's just hop over and finally take a look at the Wiz, who are just sad. They make me sad on the inside. 99.25 implied total is a uh, duty. Shit, that coffee's hot. Okay. So Portland's gonna have no trouble giving up long mid-range shots or mid-range shots in general. They are really stopping people from shooting threes. Creates a bunch of bad shots, but I think I'm going to take a look at Beal. And I'll take a look at Otto Porter. I'm just making sure that I mark this down. Ubre. I could have just said, I'll take a look at fucking everybody on the Wizards. Apparently. So Beal. Per minute is... F oh, it's come down so much. Alright, so he's back under 8. It was up to 8-3. Now down to 7-6. He's been one game without Wall, big against Portland, 46.7. I'm glad I saw that. People are going to chase the living shit out of that. So he's going to be pretty owned. Hmm. Refill a prescription. So um, I think I'm fine with Beal. He's obviously trending in our own directions. Otto Porter looks great. 7,000. Salary is down 200. Um, I see no reason to not go after Otto Porter. Needs 35. He's done it three times in his last seven. What about Ubre? I'm probably okay with Ubre. What does he need? 26. He's done it. 
three times, those first three games without Wall. Last two have been not as good. I don't think I'm going to keep Oubre. And then Gortat needs like 24. And he's done that. Three out of the last seven, almost four. Um, you know, Nurkic is not the best defender. Per minute looks fine. Yeah, I don't, I can see it. So that's it for the short list. I ran my optimizer. Yeah, my optimizer. I ran Fantasy Cruncher, 50 lineups on my projections. So let's see how that shook out. We got Russ in 100% of them. So let's say we're going to use Russ. Uh, Devin Booker in 94% of them. So let's say we're going to use Devin Booker. CJ McCollum in 90%. I do have him here, but I'm not going to lock him in yet. I want to see what opens up after I rerun this. Uh, Paul George in 90%. He needs 43. <sighs> that feels risky. TJ Warren in 80%. I definitely want to grab a piece of. And then it jumps down into the 50s after Mello. So let's run another, let's run another 50 with those three guys locked and see sort of how the percentages change. And this is only going to be a placeholder. You know, obviously news matters. I think I'll end up having Monroe in my placeholder, but if it comes out that uh, that Jakob Pertl is out, then it's 100% Jonas Valanciunas. They just don't have any other bodies. Okay, so it's still pushing CJ heavily, 86%. I'm curious as to see why. What's the gap on shooting guard? CJ at 67 is a pretty good value. How did he do against Beal last time? Thirty-three. How has he done in the past? One big one. How has... Do I have Beal at all? No. So Beal has played well against Portland. Um, I think I'd be crazy to say that I want Beal now. But I definitely want to have DeRozan in there. I really liked that profile for him. And I don't really see anybody on Phoenix that's going to be, like, dogging him out. So it's probably Booker, right, that has to guard him. Unless they put Warren on DeRozan and put Booker on one of those mid-tier guys in the center of... Uh, Toronto's lineup, like... He can't guard out OG. Like CJ Miles. CJ Miles is too big for him too, right? I don't know. I'm just mumbling to myself. I don't even know if you guys can hear that. Okay, so if I put DeRozan in, that dramatically changes everything, but it doesn't drop my main projection down that much, so I like that. Now we're up to 40% Monroe, and then Gortat and Valanciunas. I need power forwards. I do like Abaka. I don't know how Abaka and DeRozan play together, so let's just take a quick look at labs and see if they have any interesting correlations. I always like to see when I take two guys together that they're, you know, at least in the same ballpark of each other. So DeRozan and his correlation with Surge is actually positive, so I am comfortable with that. So let's lock in Surge. And the chances of me rostering Marquise Chris are pretty minimal. 
and I don't anticipate having Fred Van Vliet. Although he's an interesting GPP play if this game turns into an ass braving. <laughs> Ooh, that was aggressive. Just if it turns into a large victory. But I think I'd rather have Ulyss again at 4,000. It's just a great price for somebody that plays, you know, 25 minutes ish a game. And, like, in all actuality, it's either that or I take Dame. So we've got DeRozan and Booker. I don't much mind that they're going against each other. It's not like they're filling out their stat sheet with boards and, and like they're taking shit away from each other. They're just going to bomb. And I can see them trying to bomb on each other. Um, hmm, what happens if I lock in Joe Ingles at small forward? Where does that move my money to? All right, it moves it to Lowry. So it doesn't seem like dropping down to Ingles is a place I want to save. I think I need to go Paul George there. Although TJ Warren is probably a better option. That would give me three sons, which I don't like. So we'll go back to Paul George and lock him in. And we'll rerun. Because that locks... Oh, that's not what I want. No more angles. Well, not necessarily no more angles, but let's go this way instead. So I need a point guard, a small forward, a power forward, and a center. Center is almost assuredly going to be one of... Well, see, that's always good. After I lock in these guys, it's Valanciunas, Gortat, and Monroe split three ways. Um, power forward's a bit of a struggle there. In that, I don't want to go Russ, George, and Mello, and I already have a Baca. So where is the gap in logic? Who am I missing at the four? Is it Siakam? It's probably not Siakam. I'm certain. Wait, who am I talking about? I'm not going Siakam and Ibaka. Man, power forward's going to be the tricky spot. If that's Van Vliet or Ulyss, I'm just going to take Ulyss. Yeah, I think this is what I'm going to end up with. I think that becomes TJ Warren almost by default. And for some reason, I'm now fading Washington. So I need a power forward, and it doesn't really know who to use. Or I need a center, and it doesn't really know who to use. So how do Valanciunas and Serge and Damar go together? Damar is meh. Surge is okay. So let's put in Valanciunas. Let's get weird. And that means that I need to have a shitty power forward. So that's not going to work for me. I need to figure out... Okay, so... I liked Otto Porter. So let's do this. Let's step down off of Paul George and step into Mello. Does that give me Otto Porter? No, it gives me Joe Ingles. Okay, I'm fine with that for right now. So there we go. That's my, this is going to be my placeholder. Again, subject to change, you guys know this. Russ and Tyler Eulis, DeMar DeRozan, Booker and TJ Warren, 
uh, Joe Ingles, Mello, Serge Ibaka, Jonas Valanciunas. That's the placeholder, folks. And that's it. Three game slate, and I still rambled on and on and on. Like this video if you like it. Like this video if you don't. Uh, subscribe to the channel. It's growing big time every day. Everything is getting more and more awesome. My uh, The channel is officially under review for uh, the monetization, so... You guys are going to start bringing me in that 40 cents a video ad money. I'm going to be rolling in dough. Can't wait. Um, follow me on Twitter. Get subscribe. Uh, yep, subscribe. My handle's up there. It's at Josh Engelman. Everything I do is Josh Engelman something. It's joshengelman.com. It's Josh Engelman on Patreon. It's Josh Engelman on Twitter. Um, Josh Engelman on DFS. Lucky for me... My name is relatively unique. Uh, shout out to the dude from like England or some shit that Facebook friended me like 10 years ago. Also named Josh Engelman. That was really cool. Uh, not a lot of us out there, which makes it a lot easier to monopolize the name across every sort of uh, medium. Josh Engelman on Instagram. If you like pictures of uh, just my dogs or me drinking booze with my wife, that's pretty much everything that's going to end up on there. Um, that's all I got. I will be back tonight, live before lock, which is going to be super uneventful because it's a three-game slate of games that are not good. Although it'll be fun to watch Toronto and Phoenix. But anyway, just come live before lock. It's a great time. Uh, I'll ask questions, or I'll answer questions. Uh, we'll goof around. I'll build my lineup. Um... I mentioned in the live before lock, I mentioned it in the recap video, but for those of you who did not participate in either one of them, and really, get it together. I am tracking my bankroll and all of my entries <clears throat> very meticulously starting yesterday. I loaded up uh, $400 into FanDuel. I'm going to do 15% of my bankroll each night. 20% for head-to-head, 20% for 50-50s, 20% into double-ups and triple-ups, 20% uh, into you know three-man, five-man, 10-man, 20-man contests, and then 20% into GPPs. I'm going to be super meticulous about it. Uh, we're going to track every single day's results and ROI. We're going to show sort of you know where my scores land, um, what, which games I'm doing well against, which games I'm not. I hope that uh, people can use this as sort of an exercise for themselves so they can track what they're doing and try to get better. Um, you know, if I find out that I've lost 85% of my buy-ins in quintuple ups by the end of January, but, you know, I'm still profitable for the, you know, the next two months, well, then I'm probably going to lower the amount of quintuple ups or quintuple ups, can't speak, quintuple ups. That, uh, that I'm doing. So it's going to be a good way to see sort of, you know, where my scores land, what my average score is compared to like my, the amount of money that I'm making back from an ROI perspective. And I think it's going to be good. You don't see a lot of people diving into bankroll management or just even the tracking of results. And I think that this could be a pretty good exercise for everybody. So if you're interested in that, um, this is going to be something I'm taking a look at every single day. The breakdown in here is going to be in the recap video each morning, and I'm going to do my best to play at least five days a week, maybe six. Um, when the wife is in town and we have a three-game slate, those will probably be the situations where I take off, but I'll be in for every big slate. Since she's out of town right now, I'm definitely playing tonight. She's out of town this weekend, so uh, going to be a lot of NBA DFS and a lot of videos of me. So. If you don't like uh, a lot of videos of me, it's going to be a long week for you. That's it for me, guys. Um, find me on Twitter if you have questions or on the Reddit DFS, and I'm out.